that you already performed today. You breathe into our nostrils and you let us live, God. You didn't have to do it, Lord, but we thank you today, God. Lord, you welcome, Jesus. We invite you in today, Holy Spirit. Have your way, God. We thank you for touching our minds this morning. We thank you for touching our hearts, God. We thank you, Holy God. Have your way, Jesus. Have your way today, God. We thank you for your blood, God. Your blood that flows to the highest mountain. Your blood that moves to the lowest valley. Your blood that will never lose its power. We thank you, Holy God. We thank you for keeping our families, God. We thank you for keeping us, God, in your arms, Jesus. Thank you for the righteous can run to you, and they are safe, Lord. We welcome you today. Have your way today, God. Move down every road today, God. Move, God, to every heart, Jesus. You see your people, Lord. You see where they are today, God. Move, God, and have your way today, Jesus. We thank you, Lord God. A thousand may fall at our side and 10,000 at our right hand, but it shall not come near our dwelling. We thank you, Lord. Bless the Levites on this morning. Bless the musicians on this morning. Bless our bishop this morning. Thank you for the word that's coming forth, God. We ask you to send a word, God, that would change our life for the rest of our life, God. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for your word that brings light to our life, God. God. We bind up the hands of the enemies this morning, Father. We bind up the hands of witchcraft. We bind up the hands of the demons this morning. We bind up every distraction this morning. Have your way, dear God. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you, Holy Spirit. Have your way, God. Come in, Lord. Move how you want to move. Do what you want to do today, God. Have your way, dear Jesus. We love you, Lord God. We thank you for the first family. We thank you for every minister. We thank you for every elder. We thank you for every leader. We thank you today, God. You didn't have to do it, God, but you did, Jesus. We thank you. In the mighty name of Jesus, we give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise in the mighty name of Jesus. Have your way, dear God. Come in, Holy Spirit. Sin and rest on us, God, today. Do what you want to do, Father. We love you today, God. And we open up, God, our heart, God. We open up today, God. We give you all of us, Lord. We surrender to you today, God. We thank you, Lord. We bless you, God. We bless you today, hallelujah. Thank you, mighty God. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you and we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on and lift up the name of Jesus. God, you're worthy of the glory. Hallelujah. You're worthy of the honor. You're worthy of the praise. God, we magnify your name, Jesus. Great are your Lord and greatly to be praised. Hallelujah, we exalt your name. We exalt your great Jehovah. Hallelujah, we bless up your name. We bless your name, Jesus. Come on, let us lift him up. Let us lift him up. Let us lift him up. Hallelujah. The song says, I will lift up the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, clap. Over to your name, Jesus. Yes, Lord, we give you praise.
shall bow. <laughs> and every tongue shall confess. Hallelujah. Somebody shout Jesus. Jesus. Oh God, I love you. Appreciate you, Father. There is absolutely nobody like you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on and lift your hands and worship our King. Hallelujah. 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 Oh God, you're worthy, Jesus. Come on and talk to him, talk to him, talk to him. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Bless your name, God. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love yeah. I'm so glad you're in my life, my life, my life. Yeah. Yeah. I'm so glad you came to save us. Hey, hey. You came from heaven to earth just to show.
in the name of Jesus. There is great power in the name of Jesus. 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 Jesus.
them with us today? And if so, can you please just raise your hand so we can acknowledge you? Do we have any guests? Any guests today? Any service, but you chose to stop at Kingdom Life. And for that, we thank you and we appreciate you. Now, Kingdom Life, since we all family, let's greet each other how you see fit with a heavenly hug or a Holy Ghost high five in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. We're coming here ready this morning. Woo. Sister Coulter, God bless you. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Amen. God is in the building this morning. Hallelujah. We're going to move on in a moment. But I just want us to give God the praise. The sick demon tried to really get a hold of me. They don't want me to give God praise. But I'm going to come in here and give him praise. Out of breath and everything. I come to give him a yes, Lord. I come to give him a yes, Lord. And I want y'all to help me. Give God praise in here. Do you feel welcome? Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you. We thank Sister Parks for that wonderful welcome. Amen. At this time, Sister Lauren Jameson is coming with the announcements of the house, and more will come after that. Say amen. on the name of Jesus and nothing happens you can't call him too many times he won't he'll show up he will show up well great morning kingdom life I'm not gonna stay up here too long I'm just here to give you your morning announcement the seasoned sisters will have a hot dog and nacho sale immediately following service in the fellowship hall which is right out of this door please support the ministry on this morning 
on the road with Bishop Rosen. Bishop Rosen will be preaching at the 19th church anniversary of Transformation Now, Transformation now where the pastor is Kendall Johnson. That service will begin at today, tonight, at 5 p.m., and is located at, located at 7500 Terry Street, Columbia, South Carolina, 29209. Let's not let, let our leader take a walk on his own. The official day for Women's Day will be next Sunday, March 24th, 2024. Women, make some noise. Woo, 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 woo. Service will begin at 10 a.m. with a special guest speaker, Lady Rachel Brown. All women are asked to wear shades of white with accents of gold. Elders, at this time, Elder Sean Coulter is coming with a special announcement. God bless you, everyone. Great morning, everyone. Great morning, everyone. It is a blessing to be here. How many are you excited about being here on this morning? Hallelujah. How many are you excited about the kingdom life in general? Hallelujah. Has kingdom life done some things for you? Hallelujah. Has the ministry of kingdom life changed your life? Okay, I, I don't see as much excitement as I should see right at this moment. How much has kingdom life helped change your life? That's the ministry through our bishop, hallelujah. The ministry through our bishop and our, and our ministry, hallelujah. We're so thankful, hallelujah, for being in kingdom life on this morning, hallelujah. If we're excited about being here, If we are excited about being here, if we are excited about being here, then therefore, what do we need to do? What, what do we need to do? If we're excited about something, what do we need to do? We need to go and tell somebody else about it. Am I right? How many of us have just invited somebody to church lately. Let's be honest about it. Let's be real about it. And if you haven't, it's okay. Because you got a chance to invite them to church. Understanding that it's not our bishop's place to do the pulling. It's because of the excitement that we have about our ministry. Because this is ours. This is not Bishop Rosen's ministry. This is our ministry. Would you agree? So therefore, if it's yours, that means you need to go in and take full ownership of what it is that you are doing. Of what it is that, if you want somebody to come to your business, how many business owners do we have? We have business owners, correct? So therefore, if you're a business owner, in order for you to be able to build your clientele, what do you have to do? Oh, y'all can talk back to me. It's really okay. You have to advertise. You have to tell somebody about it because you are excited. You want people to know about what it is that you have going on. So therefore, we need you to tell others about what's going on in Kingdom Life. Since the month of January, we have had a notable miracle happen in this house. I don't, a miracle ain't a miracle until it happened in your house, obviously. <laughs> A miracle, you're really not excited about a miracle until you really need a miracle. So therefore, if it has happened since January every week in somebody's house, I'm going to say it's going to happen in my house next. The next miracle is coming in the coach's house. So I need you to put that in the house. The next miracle is coming to my house. It's coming to my house. Hallelujah. So therefore, notable miracles have been happening in this house. So therefore, we need to go and tell somebody about the miracles that God has done in this house. So therefore, what we need to do in April, the month of April, everybody say the month of April. We have Frangelism Month. Okay, listen. What we're not going to do is being here and just sitting because at the end of the day, we are excited about telling somebody about Jesus. 
Understanding that we are ministers ourselves. You don't have to have the title to actually minister to somebody. I had a student that come to me the other day and he was like, Mr. Sean, I want to be saved. Am I going to actually say, no, I need you to wait to come to church on Sunday? Or am I going to be able to actually give them the scripture and walk them through salvation? So therefore, I need you to understand that you are ministers to go out and beget people. We're the ones that we need to go and get people. So therefore, the month of February, everybody say the first Sunday, April 7th. April 7th is our Friends Day. I need you to go and bring every friend you can bring. And, you know, and I thought about it and we said that we would give gifts and stuff like that for the person that brings the most, that brings the most guests. But my thing is, if you love your church, why you need a gift? Why do I need to coerce you to invite somebody into church? We shouldn't have to do that. I don't have to coerce you. Or I asked a friend the other day, I said, what do I need to do to get you to come to church? And all he said was, just invite me. It is that simple. If you are excited about your ministry, I need you to invite somebody to church. That is important. If it has changed your life, don't be selfish with it. Share it. Because somebody invited you. And being that somebody invited you, you need to share the love and invite somebody else. So for the whole month of April, I need you. We got our shapers. We got our dreamers. We, what's the rest of them? Our builders. What else? Uh-uh, that ain't it. <laughs> we, we have our kingdom life ministry all the way around. I need to know which group is going to bring the most people. That's your challenge. Challenge. Which group is going to bring the most people? The dream, somebody said the dreamers are going to bring the most people. So I need on the, on the first Sunday, on April 7th, I need you to bring as many people as you can to, to church. On the first Sunday, bring every friend you can bring. And then on the second Sunday, I need you to bring every relative you can bring. If you care about your friends and your relatives, and this word is changing your life, help them be changed as well. Then on the third Sunday, we have our associates. And then on the fourth Sunday, we have our neighbors. So that's a lot of people that we're going to be telling about the kingdom of God. So I need us. I need us. I need us to go and tell the world about kingdom life. Come and join us. Great morning, everybody. Great morning, everybody. This is a part of our uh, service that everybody can take a part in. It is time for our opportunity to prosper. So let's get excited about it. Because God loves a what? A cheerful giver. Exactly right. So as you get your offerings and tithes together, I was sitting there and I was thinking about how good God is. And a lot of times we take things for granted. But God is so good. A lot of you may know or may not know. But um, some months ago, my husband had surgery, so he was out of work for a while. And things got a little tight at some point. But God was faithful. Through it all, was still able to pay my tithes, still paid my um, seed towards the strategy 120. God was faithful. Sometimes you have to let things go that mean a lot to you materialistically wise. I wasn't getting my nails done. There's things I, I didn't have to buy any clothes. I would just buy clothes just because I want to. But you had to make, I had to make those choices. And God was faithful about it. Not so long ago, during the time when my husband wasn't working, the bank, I got a letter from the bank about our mortgage and it said that it was going up. I was like, Lord, okay. <laughs> but I trust you, God. 
And it did go up. But I was still able to pay my tithes. I was still able to pay my 120 strategy and give a seed at times. God was still faithful. Not so long ago, last year sometime, we had a layoff at work. I was not in a number. God was still faithful. About three weeks ago, we had another layoff. But God kept me there. God is faithful. Sometimes we don't always understand why God does what he does. But you just have to have faith in him and trust in him because he knows what he's doing. And lastly, y'all, God is so good. So, through all of this, I stayed faithful, believing in God, trusting in God, still able to pay my tithes, still able to pay my 120, still able to, to pay my seed. And God blessed our home. God bless our home. So guess what? The mortgage I was talking about, I don't have.
This year, so far, there's been a notable miracle in kingdom life, and it's documented. Now, if it hasn't happened to you yet personally, because the way I saw you praising God for somebody else, the Spirit would have me to tell you, you're next. No way. Maybe you didn't hear me. Because the way you acted and responded, you couldn't have heard what I just, what the Holy Ghost just said. So I'm going to reiterate it for all of you that just sitting there staring off and out like, like you don't know what to do. And as a matter of fact, I'm not going to reiterate it. I want you to declare it because if you decree a thing, 
it shall be established for you. It don't matter if I say it, if you don't say it. I need you to open up your mouth and when you get finished with the phrase, I want you to praise him like you believe it. I ain't gonna tell you, I already told you what the Holy Ghost said, but if you don't believe it, then you, it ain't gonna happen for you. But I need somebody in here that got some faith to declare and shout with everything in you and go to dancing and running. I'm next. Investigators 
make an attempt to determine how long someone's been dead. They use certain mechanisms. They check them in a way to try to get as close to be able to determine the time of death. Certain indicators, how warm a body is or how cold a body, you know, just different things that they use to mark the time of death. But I need everybody to go turn around, look at the clock and mark the time of your miracle. And if I be a prophet of God, it just happened. I said it just happened. We need some Bible. The centurion told the Lord, so you don't have to come to my house. Just speak in a word and my servant will be healed. When the centurion got back to his house, he said, I just have a question. Since the, my servant is healed, I just got one question. When did it happen? And they told him around about he said, that's the time that Jesus said it. I need you to just tell everybody on your road, no time lapse. The moment he says it is the moment it's done. He ain't waiting on the parts to come in. Oh, Y'all know the Lord host. He not waiting for the parts to come in. He not waiting on a second opinion. He not waiting for the specialist to come see you. It's done, it's done, it's done. It's done, it's done, it's done. You better catch it in the Holy Ghost. It's done, it's done, it's done, it's done, it's done, it's Not it will be, it's done. Right. The Lord bless you. Be seated. Let's, let's. I walk into a. I walked into a fire. Woo! I love it when God does what he does. It's the Lord's doing, and it's marvelous in our eyes. And um, y'all be seated. Y'all don't know how to act. Y'all are so disobedient. Be seated. Y'all so disobedient. Sit down. Sit down. Let me talk. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, I, I heard what he said, but I came for this. I came to do something I couldn't do at my job. I know y'all say, I can praise him at home, but you can't praise him like this. There's something about the energy of the Holy Ghost. That's why the scripture tells us, don't forsake the assembly. What well, the ushers dancing in the y'all? Help her real softly. Y'all just play real softly. I 
came up in the old holiness church when the praise would get like this and we'd be playing they said just bring it down just keep it and I see the old mothers getting the I hope I ain't got no old uh, never mind I hope I ain't got no I'm looking for the the older praisers as a matter of fact Matter of fact, slow it down just a little bit. And the mothers, my mom and them, and mothers of the church, they get out in the aisle and just go. So some of the seasoned sisters and the, and the shapers didn't move because it might have been too fast, but I just gave y'all some music. I need to see some experienced praises. Watch it now. Just clap your hands. When they get to, when they get good to Elder Harley, she starts strutting. Get good to Mama Purnell, she get the bending over. Look at your neighbor and tell him that's how God's gonna bless you. He gonna give you a nice even pace. And daily, he going to bless you. Just, you're going to wake up to blessing after blessing. Woo. All right, let me leave y'all alone. Let me just... Right, be seated. I am beyond blessed and privileged today to be in the house of the Lord. And um, we pray for this. Now, let me clarify that. We pray for this, that when we come through the doors, that there will be a glory that is released in our midst and that people's lives and hearts will be lifted. So much is going on in the world. So much is going on in our personal lives. When I come to church, I need something that lifts me instructs me, come on, inspires me, motivates me to be better than I was last week. And I know there's this underturn, undertone going on in the, in the earth and in the community. People calling the church whack. The church is irrelevant, but I love the church. <laughs> I got saved in church. And what I mean by that is somebody was preaching at church the gospel. Hallelujah. Somebody was preaching the gospel in the church. Somebody was praying in the church. The political, political system, church and Things have gone sour and awry. But Jesus said, I'm coming back for a church. I ain't coming back for your system. I'm coming back for a church. And uh, he also fixed it. Look at your name and tell them the church is doing fine. Upon this rock, I'll build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail. Let me say a couple of things. Uh, Y'all all right? Uh, everybody didn't say it. Just shake your legs. Shake your legs for a bit. Amen. Shake your legs. I want to thank God for the O'Sullivan family back with us today. New baby. Come on, let's thank God for them. Come on, let's celebrate them. New life. Thank God. Brother Chris.
here. Sister Sequoia and the babies are here. What a blessing. What a blessing. Sister Sally's back in the house of the Lord. Thank God. Thank God. What a blessing. When God does what he does, we're always happy. Um, I, I know I see you. And uh, I see one of my daughters is here. And um, she's a bit... Um, a little bit deceitful because I was talking to her yesterday and uh, she was telling me how homesick she was and now she had the nerve to be she didn't make no make no anything about she was going to be here but Savannah's home y'all <laughs> and I'm grateful I'm grateful to God <laughs> Oh my, I was watching service as I was on my way in, and I'm telling you, God is doing, all I'm going to say is God is doing what he said he would do. Can we give God praise for all of these amazing women? Come on, let's thank God for the women of kingdom life. Yes, Lord, what an absolute blessing. I am peacock proud and hippopotamus happy. Hippopotamus happy to see what God is doing in the life of our church. And I'm so grateful for all of you that were able to be with us on Friday night. Oh, how the Lord, how the Lord met us in Greenville, South Carolina. And I'm just so grateful. So, so, so grateful. And this afternoon, I'm going to ask everybody who wasn't able to make it, and um, and well, let me say it like this: uh, uh, this fire don't want to be put out. And um, and this afternoon, uh, we don't get a chance to fellowship often locally. Most of the time, my travels take me abroad. But when we have opportunity as a church family to fellowship with our dear brothers and sisters, I think we ought to take advantage of it. And it is strength. Let me say this. When you decide, I don't feel like going, ain't nobody going to know about nobody else's church. You decide to not to encourage and support and strengthen. All right? Uh, we don't go often anywhere. And um, we don't go to church but once a week. Um, you can't tell me that it's too much. I can't buy that. Can't, we can't, we, we don't, it's not too much. It's just what you prioritize and what you put value to. So I will ask you, you that hear my voice, I'm only talking to those who can hear me. Um, I want to really, and I'm saying this for a reason, I want to really be a blessing and support to Pastor Kendall Johnson and Pastor Celeste Johnson. They are very special people to the kingdom of God for many, many years. Sister Renee Johnson is a member of this church. And we are faithful, faithful, faithful Levite. And, um, and she's there with her brother and that church. And he's been a blessing to our church. Amen. More than once. And so I want us to go in great numbers today to support them and to, to celebrate 19 years. Amen. 19 years. And anybody that can do anything for 19 days is, or 19 months is worthy of celebration. But for 19 years, uh, it, it takes God. So I want us to be there and um, God's going to bless us in a very, very special way. Our hearts are indicted in a good matter from the Lord. And as I was praying, the Lord began to show me, or, or not just show me, but to talk to me uh, about this month. And, and um, you know, sometimes you're looking all over the world for something that God has right in the house. And God has deposited great gifts right in the house. And let me say this to you, we ought not ever be more excited about outsiders than we are about our own. We have, we have the greatest music ministry anywhere. We have gills, gifted, skilled, and anointed preachers and teachers in the house. Come on, say something, y'all, come on. 
we got the most powerful, strong prayer warriors and intercessors in the house. We got the greatest kingdom attendants and guest services people. And I don't say this often, but we got, we, like, as I should, but we got the greatest parking attendants. Come on, church. We got the greatest media team in the house. We got the greatest members. Yeah, that, all, that means you ought to be clapping for the, somebody sitting next to you. The prophecy from the Lord was that God would in this season send people into this house that will be in need of whatever God has given us and the grace that he's put upon us. But they wouldn't be lost. But what was in them would need to be rediscovered and that what was in them would be cultivated and what they have already would help take kingdom life to another level. This woman of God hails from Barnwell, South Carolina. And she acknowledged the call in her early 20s to preach the gospel and it was out of the mouth of a late grandmother, Reverend Alma Stevenson Johnson that charged her to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. As a trained and gifted pianist, Denise has served in various spiritual capacities throughout her life. In addition to serving faithfully under her former pastors, Bishop Michael C. Butler, our beloved mayor and apostle Ryan McGimsey, Minister James has studied and earned her bachelor in, edu in elementary education, a master's in education and education specialist in education administration of the illustrious, I don't know why she wanted to roll this, but I'll, I'll say it because y'all can appreciate the illustrious South Carolina State University. <laughs> Your stock just went all the way up, right? <laughs> Thank God. She is currently in pursuit of a doctor in education and education administration. She is somebody in the kingdom of God, a lover of people, and she is intentional about helping people develop their walk with God and their educational pursuits in life. And she currently serves, among many other things, as a director of the Star Academy and, of course, an adjunct professor at Voorhees University. Uh, Denise James is second daughter uh, of three to Pastor and Mrs. Freddie Wright of Barnwell, South Carolina. And she's the proud mother of uh, Ariana. Hey, Alexandria, beautiful woman of God. She firmly believes in miracles, signs, and wonders, and her life, and let me just say, uh, this is no pecking order. It was God's order. And... Um, and as we move in the spirit of God, I'm grateful that amongst us are capable and qualified voices. And um, she's proven herself in leadership and service rather here at the Kingdom uh, Life Church. She's jumped right in and whatever her hands have found to do. I remember when she made the conscious decision to join our fellowship in particular, she says, I'm ready to work, Pastor. And it wasn't just words. She has exhibited that. Uh, and I want to say thank you. Sometimes people can be around you for a long time and never get your spirit. And then sometimes there are people who jump right in and grab the mantle in the heart of this place. And so after, after the next selection, uh, the sermonic presentation and expression by our amazing praise and worship team, Kingdom Singers, as we stand in honor in deference to the life of the ministry of Elder Denise right. James, I'm sorry. It, I knew it was one of them that she was like, delete. All right. Elder Denise, <laughs> Denise James. Come on, let's give God praise as she will come and bless us.
had an issue of blood. And so as she came to Jesus, she just touched the hem of his garment. And she was made whole. So can we lift our hands? And can we give the reverence to the Lord for his blood being made whole? the name of the Lord in this place. We thank God for the blood. We thank God for the blood. It's the blood that flows from Calvary's mountain. Hallelujah, the blood. Hallelujah. Oh, the blood. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. My mother never allowed me to be a cheerleader, so I'm not going to pump and prime you. Hallelujah, I'm talking about the blood. 
that cleanse us white as snow. Hallelujah. The blood, hallelujah. The blood, Jesus, hallelujah. God, we bless your name, hallelujah. We exalt your name on high, Jesus. There is none like you, Father. None like you, Jesus. We exalt your name, Lord, hallelujah. We lift your name high, Jesus. Oh, the blood, ta da da man sa ta The blood, the blood, the blood. Come on and plead the blood in the house for a minute. This is not a spectator sport. Hallelujah. We bless your name, Jesus. We thank you for setting the atmosphere, Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you for meeting the needs of your people. We thank you for being in the house, Lord. We thank you for throwing your Thank you for throwing your weight around, Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, the heavyweight champion of this world. Hallelujah. We're talking about Jesus. Hallelujah. Don't look at me funny. Lift your hands and say something good to him. Say something good to him. Say something good to him. Get on your mind what you want him to do. Get on your mind what you want him to do in this house. Hallelujah. Robo Kumbandara. Jesus, move, Jesus, move, Jesus, get your hands up, get your hands up, talk to him, get your hands up, get on your mind what you want the Lord to do for you, what you want the Lord to do for your family, what you want the Lord to do for your child, hallelujah, for your sick relative, ask the Lord to dig deep, hallelujah, go deep down on the inside, everywhere that is crooked, ask the Lord to make it right, make it straight, Jesus, make it straight, Jesus, get it right. Hallelujah. Come on and say something to him. Yeah. Oh. His voice activated in this house. Open up your mouth. Okay, say, say, say. That's it. Say something to him. Say something to him. Huh? Pull on God, he's going to pull on me. Pull on God, he's going to pull on me. Come on, exercise your gift. Blast this place with tongues. In the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, God, hallelujah. Oh, God, hallelujah. Oh, God, hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, to your will, Jesus. Yes, to your way, Lord. Yes, when it feels good. Yes, when it feels bad. Our soul says yes. Hey! 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 Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. It is. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord, we bless your name. Hallelujah. Hey, hallelujah. He's a good God. He is a good God. And what you're doing, you're activating your inner man. Hallelujah. You're building yourself up in the most holy faith. You're stirring up that gift that's on the inside. Hallelujah. You're activating the word. Hallelujah. So when I say open up your mouth and say something, you are activating, hallelujah. But when the word parts out of your mouth, it becomes animated. To animate means to make alive. So if I say, bless the name of the Lord, huh? say something well of him, you are bringing your words to life. Watch this. I am blessed. The man of God already said it just as soon it come out your mouth, hallelujah. 
the Lord said out of the mouth of the prophet, it was done. I looked at the time, it was 1055. My time was 1055. I'm a numbers girl, so that was double double for me. Five and five is 10. Even if you add five and five is 10 plus one is 11, one plus one is two. Come on. That's still a double blessing for me and for you. Come on and bless the name of the Lord. Hey, 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 Get on your mind, get on your mind, get on your mind. You know what you need better than anybody else, amen? You go ahead and sit down in this place. I love you. The scene has already been set, hallelujah. The place is saturated. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. For his mercy endureth forever. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. For the Lord is good. And his mercy endureth forever. You stay right there with me, minister. Hallelujah. Let the redeem of the Lord say so. Okay. I'm a teacher by trade, so what I'm doing, I'm just checking. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he has delivered out of the hand of the enemy. I got one for you. How about this? Thou has caused men to ride over our heads. We went through the fire. Anybody went through the fire? Anybody still in the fire? That's all right. We went through the fire and through water, but thou brought us out into a wealthy place. I already told you my mama wouldn't let me be a cheerleader, so I ain't gonna pump and prime you. I'm gonna activate, I'm gonna give you the word. I'm gonna give you the word, amen. Amen. And when you hear the word, you respond. When you hear the word, you respond. When you hear the word, you got to respond. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I love you all. I bless the Lord. Amen. For being here this morning. I thank God. Amen. For the Lord is a good God. He is kind. He is so good to me. I tell you, I bless the Lord. Amen. For our, our pastor, our father. Amen. The man of God. That is correct. We're going to give honor where honor is due. We will not muzzle the ox that treadeth out the corn. Amen. We're going to bless the man of God. Hallelujah. And God has blessed us to bless this house. And don't you know, once you take care of his house, he takes care of your house. Amen. And also, amen, mama. It's mom. I was looking for mom. We honor you, mother. Amen. We thank God for this powerhouse. She's got my back in so many ways. She has my back. She has your back in so many ways. Amen. Ways that we have absolutely no clue, but we honor you. And we thank God, amen, for the trials and the tribulations that you had to walk to to get to, to this place for such a time as this. Amen. And we honor you, Mom. We honor you, woman of God. Amen. And we thank you for this opportunity. Amen. If you love the Lord, show some sign in this place. Amen. We went through the fire. Some of it was self-inflicted. Some of it was out of curiosity. Knowing good and well you didn't have nine lives like a cat. Come on here. Uh-huh. And then some others, life actually happened. Amen. But the blessed thing about it, somebody say I made it. In fact, I made it out all right. Hey, if that's your testimony, amen. Glory to God. We made it out all right. Many of us was actually knee deep, neck deep in the waters of discomfort, despair, and discouragement. But our testimony is the fact that we made it. We made it out. Our clothes were soaked and wet. We could have smelled like smoke. But blessed be the name of the Lord, we made it out. 
We made it. Hallelujah. We made it out all right. Come on and bless God. Hallelujah. Bless God. Now, saints, that's not the direction that we're going today. But if you think back for a moment, you know we can actually stay there. If you think back for a moment, we can actually stay there. And in fact, some fires that we were in, we should have been burnt up. It was justified that we would be consumed. But the word of God tells us it is because of the Lord's mercies. Huh? It's of the Lord's mercies. Come on, and, and his compassions faileth us not. So great, amen, is the mercy. Now, of God, raise your expectations as you pull on the Lord. As you heard me say earlier, your needs will be met, amen? Now, listen to this. What you're looking for this morning is also looking for you. If you're looking for deliverance, deliverance is looking for you. If you're looking for freedom, freedom is looking for you. If you're looking for activation, if you're looking to be ignited, being ignited is also looking for you. Do know this morning that the Lord is here to meet your needs. Amen? All right, so my assignment is very clear this morning, and I thank you all because I feel you pulling on Sister Denise. I thank God for you. I I appreciate the Lord, amen, for this moment. Now, my assignment is very clear this morning. As I deliver unto you and as you receive. Now, the thing about you receiving deliverance, it's more, it goes beyond uh, uh, what we see in terms of uh, hands being laid. Some people fall out, some people don't. But your deliverance looks like you actually getting out of the way and allowing God to be God in your life. Y'all hear me? Now, if you don't have your pencil and paper, I encourage you to do so. Amen. Because I am going to drop some scriptures down for you. Also, please make sure that you catch the replay. Uh, our online audience, once again, we thank God for you. Amen. And keep those numbers up. If you can hear me, just type one. Don't forget to like and share and bless God in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. So to receive your deliverance, you're going to have to move out of the way. Touch your neighbor and say, you got to get out of God's way. Uh-huh. If you would please turn with me to Genesis. Genesis is the first book in the Bible. Amen. Time existed. There was. Uh-uh. That's mighty weak. In the beginning, before time actually existed, before there was anything, there was. All right. Now you're talking to me. Talk back to me. Oh, there's a wasp. Talk back to me. Come on. I need a man up here real quickly, please. Seriously. I'm very serious. I need a man up here. Amen. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Let's go to Genesis 37. Somebody say Genesis 37. All right. Praise the name of the Lord. In Jesus' name. We thank God for the man of God, do we not? Yeah, right. I got him. He good. Oh, my. Thank you, man of God. I know it is the custom in our house that we stand when the word comes forth, but I'm going to present to you many scriptures. So out of respect and for the sake of time, I'm going to request that you please be seated. I will read, but if I'm asking you to call back to me the scripture, I'm going to need you to shout and read with a voice of triumph. Amen. Amen. All right. Genesis 37, verse 1. And Jacob dwelt in the land wherein his father was stranger, in the land. And the lad was with the sons of Behal and with the sons of Ziphah, his father's wives. And Joseph brought into his father their evil report. Verse 3. Now Israel, Jacob, loved Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age and he made him a coat of many colors. Verse four, and when his brethren saw that their father loved him more than all of his brethren, they hated him and could not speak 
peaceably unto him. Verse 5, and Joseph dreamed a dream. Somebody say dream. dream. All right. And he told it his brethren, and they hated him even the more. Go to verse 9. Verse 9 says, and he dreamed yet another dream. Somebody say a dream. I like how you're talking back to me. Amen. If you can say it, you can see it. Y'all hear me? If you can say it, you can see it. Now, we're saying the word, but then we're going to transfer that to everything else that pertains to your life. Amen? All right, verse 9. And he dreamed yet another dream and told it his brethren and said, Behold, I have dreamed a dream more, and behold, the sun and the moon and the eleven stars made obedience to me. Verse 11. And his brethren envied him. But his father observed the saying. Amen? All right. Verses 23 and 24. Amen. And it came to pass when Joseph was come into his brethren that they stripped Joseph out of his coat, his coat of many colors that was with him. 24. And they took him and cast him into a pit, and the pit was empty. There was no water in it. Go to verse 23, that was 23, 24. Go to verse 28. Then there passed by Midianites merchantmen, and they drew and lift up Joseph out of the pit and sold Joseph to Ishmaelites for 20 pieces of silver, and they brought Joseph into Egypt. Where? Egypt. All right, go to verse 36. 36 says, and the an officer of Pharaoh's and captain of the guard. Hmm. Now, those are our supporting scriptures, pretty much setting the stage for where we want to go today. But I want to present to you what I'm calling priority scriptures. Classroom teachers in any state, and particularly in the state of South Carolina, when we want to focus on standards that we know that our students are going to be taught, we call those the priority or the power standards. Amen. So I'm going to give you some priority scriptures. Why are you calling them priority scriptures? Because these scriptures, I want you to commit to memory. Uh-huh. I want you to commit to memory. I want you to rehearse. And then I want you to meditate on them. Commit to memory, rehearse, and meditate. Say it again. Commit to memory, rehearse. Go to Genesis 50 and 20. Genesis 50 and 20 says, but as for you, ye thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good to bring it to pass as it is this day to save much people alive. Come on. Psalms 119, 71. I'm almost finished. One more. Psalms 119 and 71. You all know this one. 119.71. Now I want you to read this with your chest. Y'all know what that means by reading the scripture with your chest? Don't play with it. All right? Don't play with it. I'm reading from the King James Version. One, two, ready, read. It is good for me. Uh-uh, 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 uh-uh. That was weak as water. Come on here. Genesis, and it was. Yes, it was. Psalms 119, 71. Let's read together. It is good. Read it again. One more time. Last but not least, go to Romans 8 and 28. Y'all already know what it is. Come on. Romans 8 and 28. Are we there? Uh-huh. Romans 8 and 28. Uh-huh. One, two, ready, read. Read. 
Now that was a hot mess. That was a hot mess. Praise the Lord. Amen. Romans 8 and 28. We're going to read that again, family. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your presence. God, we thank you for your holy word. We praise you now for bringing comfort and clarity to all that's here today. Open every eye to see and every ear to hear. Every heart to receive, believe, and be forever changed in the mighty name of Jesus. Come on and bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Mm -mm. Bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. I need you. Bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. We're rejoicing for the word of God and not only the word of God, but also for the God of our salvation. Really, recently, we have been given the charge and instructions as to how to get unstuck. Somebody say unstuck. Thank you. And how to reposture ourselves. And most recently, how to get and keep God's attention. Amen. We can all agree that many times than we really admit we start off very strong and due to the lack of discipline and consistency, we find ourselves back at square one. Hmm. Square one, you know, that place where you feel like you have to begin again after making the same dumb mistake again. Come on here, square one, you know, where you went too far this time again. Am I talking to somebody? Come on now, square one. You left your mouth on automatic and whatever came out, came out. You know what I'm trying to say, right? Uh-huh, square one. And there are you once again taking yourself down a path of guilt, a pity party, and yes, even for some, isolation. Uh, nah, but not this time. Baby, I want you to lay hands on yourself. Lay hands on yourself and declare enough is enough. All right, come on and be the best prophet over your life. And I want you to declare this right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Say, in the mighty name of Jesus, no more repeats. The cycle is broken. The yoke is destroyed. I am free. I am free. Glory to God. I am free. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now, if I could pin a title for this thought, it would be, it was for my good. Come on and bless God. Amen. Come on. You already know, God, I went through all that for this. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. It was for my good. Help me this morning with the thunderous sound and shout, it was for my good. Hey, come on. Yes. Yes, it was for your good. Hallelujah. You mean to tell me all of that mess that I went through? I can even go all the way back to when I was a kid. Yes, it was for your good. Amen. All right. Webster's Dictionary defines it as that one. It's used as a subject or a direct object or indirect object of a verb or an object of a preposition. In other words, in other words, it is that thing. Come on. It is that person. Uh-huh. It is that place of repeated offense. You hear me? It can be that situation or that hurt that you have on repeat and rehearse that you just won't let it go huh to the point to the point where you can actually feel taste the hurt the moment that the offense took place don't you know that's not fair to you that's not fair to you or your next amen but somebody say, uh, no, more repeats. no more repeats. All right, all right, amen. Now, it can be that which you have on repeat, as I said, and rehearsing the intricate details over and over and over again. You know, the hurt and disappointment that takes your mind back to the place and to the point of pain. 
whereas you refuse to release it. But today in the name of Jesus and by the spirit of God, I want you to declare, I am free. free. Say it again, I am free. Amen. You are free, beloved ones of God. You are free. And in fact, you so free, you're going to stay free. Hallelujah. Those repeated violations, those senses of abandonment, those rejection uh, that will come and those offenses will come or even those addictions that you did not get help for. You know, even that old lifestyle. That old way of thinking and thinking it's okay to operate spiritually from a fleshly perspective. You can't do that. We can't do that. It must be released now in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. All right. Webster also goes to and explain good in this text as an adverb, meaning how well or how the best or how suitable things worked out, or how things were for the situation at hand. In other words, I came to tell you this morning that everything that you have experienced, be it good, be it bad, be it indifferent, it was for your good. Now I want you to talk to the Lord, right? Talk to the Lord and say, Lord, let me to know the good out of all of this. All right, say, Lord, show me the good out of all of this. In the mighty name of, in the mighty name of. I like Joseph's story in Genesis because you have someone born into a strange family dynamic. All right, and you Bible readers, his daddy was an old man. His daddy was an old man who was in love with Rachel, his mom. And according to the customs of that time, Jacob, Joseph's father, had three of the wives and 11 of the sons. Women of God, we thank God for Jesus, amen? We are so well-versed and creative beings. We carry the womb of vision. And at the appointed time, we deliver. Mm -hmm. But how many of you all know as we gear and as we give and we share our gifts and talents to others, sharing our man with another woman ain't one of them. I don't hear God, amen. That is not our testimony. Men, I know it's the same thing for you, amen. You will share your food sometimes or even your money. But good God Almighty, not your honey. Come on, brothers. I'm talking to grown folks in the house. Amen. Amen. You don't share your good thing or neither your fountain of favor. Amen. Ladies, don't you know that you are favor? When he finds you, he finds a good thing and obtain it. Favor from the Lord. Amen. You're not a wife when you get down to the altar. No, ladies. You're not a wife when you get down to the altar. You're a wife before you get there. Amen. The only difference is you don't give him wifely privileges until you got your ring and your papers. Come on and somebody say amen in the house. Right is still right and holiness is still right. Amen. Amen. Amen, amen, and praise God. Hallelujah. So I like the story of Joseph. He was his father's favorite, but his brothers hated him to the point where they sold him off as a slave and landed in the home, or rather in the estates of Potiphar, Pharaoh's commander-in-chief. Are you with me? What struck my attention with this was the story was not the fact that he went from the pit to the palace, or that he was always on the run from trouble. And I'm going to pin that for a second because sometimes, sometimes you got to run. Sometimes you got to run from trouble, especially when trouble meets you right there at your door. Uh Uh-huh. Y'all looking at me mighty funny. Huh? Sometimes you have to run from trouble. And it's not the fact that you're afraid of them. It's the fact that you're afraid of you. Because you know you more than anybody else. 
you know what you will do and you know what you will not do. Amen. So you never ever put yourself in a place or a situation that your good will be spoken evil of. Amen. Do I have a witness in the house? You never put yourself, hallelujah, amen, in that type of position. So he landed in the estates of Potiphar, Pharaoh's commander in chief. Um, and what struck me was the fact of his current placement and circumstance did not change his righteous stand before God. Mm -mm. Joseph went through hell and high water. His brothers actually wanted to kill him, but they didn't. Amen. They wanted to kill him, so they sold him off. Amen. And when you get an opportunity, I, I encourage you to read the story of Joseph because it is absolutely amazing. It is amazing. But I want to encourage you that when adversity comes and when and life throws a curveball at you, don't retreat. Don't retreat. Don't go back to what you used to do. All right, because if you go back to what you used to do and how you used to solve problems and how you know when money ran low, when you know when to go find the money, hallelujah, and things got tight and you know what to do, hallelujah, but that wasn't quite honorable, don't retreat and go, don't go back to that. Amen. Stay the course. Somebody say, stay the course. No more repeats. Oh, we're going to say that again. Stay the course and no more repeats. So uh, when, when life comes and throw you a curveball, don't retreat and pout and throw in the towel. Look again. Change your perspective. Ask God to show you the good in it. Amen. It's quite fine, actually, to tell God, Lord, show me the steps to take. Lord, lead my feet in the prophetic path that you have for me. And God, even thank you for ordering my steps. I will obey. Amen. Come on and shout somebody. It was for my good. Now watch this. You've been changed from one department on your job or position. And before you jump ship and start running your mouth or start looking for another job, look again. Somebody say look again. Work the work of him that sent you. What does that look like? Work honorably. Show up to work on time. Clock in and clock out like you're supposed to. Be honest when you're doing your paperwork. Am I talking? Oh, it's quiet. Ooh, I felt that just now. I felt that just now. Be honorable. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And quit looking for the hookup. Stop looking for the hookup from the world. Don't do it. The scripture tells us that the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just. We don't look for the hookup. The Lord is setting the table and preparing a place for us in the presence of our. So God ain't going to hook you up. He's going to set you up. Hallelujah. Amen. God will set you up. And in fact, our God would not only bless you, but he would elevate you and cause favor to escort you into rooms and sit at tables and to be among great men and women. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord for that. Hallelujah. Someone shout, it was for my good. Joseph recognized that through all the travails he had undergone were ordained by God to ensure the survival of Egypt and the surrounding countries. May all those around you and those connected to you never be without. Maybe I need to say that again. May all those around you and those connected to you Never be without. Lack will not be their portion. In times of famine and lack, I speak that you and all of those that are connected to you will have more than enough. You will have more than enough. You will have more than enough. Your job will be sustained because you are there. Amen. You heard the woman of God testify over here while others were being laid off. God preserved her and her job. Amen. 
But one thing I got to tell you, family, you got to live honorably and you got to walk honorably. You have to walk honorably. Go back to the point where it says, don't look for the hookups. Make sure your paperwork is tight and right. Make sure that you're not caught in the break room and work room gossiping about your boss. And if stuff ain't right, shut your mouth and pray. Come on, shut your mouth and pray. Shut your mouth and pray. If your teachers are not fair on the college campus, shut your mouth and pray and ask the Lord to touch the heart of those that are to look at your situation. Because the God that we serve will change rules, regulations, systems just for us. Do you believe it? Do you really believe it? He will change rules, regulations, and systems just for us. But we have to do our part as the body of Christ. Amen? We have to do our part. We are the walking epistles. Amen? When people look at us, they should see a walking pool of wisdom. Not someone that runs their mouth. Not necessarily carrying the Bible in the big chain around your neck. Not saying there's nothing wrong with it. Amen? But the life that you live and how you perform your duties on a day-to-day -day basis, that is the best witness that you can ever be. Hallelujah. And someone will come up and say, you know, something is different about you. Tell me about it. Amen. If someone talks off, you don't have to hee hee and haw haw and join in with them. Absolutely not. Don't let your good be spoken evil of. Amen. And in these days and times, you have to be the light in darkness. Hallelujah. Be the light. Joseph at the end was able to forgive his brethren. Now I'm going to go there too. Help me out, brother. Help me out, brother Josh, minister Josh. Joseph was able to forgive. He was able to forgive his brothers. He knew that his brothers wanted to kill him. He knew that his brothers were no good to him. One, because they didn't have full parents. And you know, many families have different dynamics. And there are a lot of things in our families um, and in our situations that would cause us to actually be angry and to justify us to retaliate. But that is not the way that the Lord would have us to go. If you have not forgiven someone, now is the time that you do so. Even if that means you forgive you. Okay. Can I tell you just to let it go? Let the offense go. Let the offender go. Those high expectations that you had for those people, they could only give you what they had. Come on. Let it go. I want you to put your hands on yourself. This is what self-care and self-deliverance, this is what it looks like. And I want you to take a moment and I want you to talk. Thank you, Jesus. I want you to speak to the Lord. You talk to God. Amen. He arrested me at this point. There's some things, some people, including yourself, that you need that to forgive, to move on, to move forward. Amen. Talk to the Lord at this time. Thank you, Jesus. Shatama kura basi shi shamana na kura ramasi shi tanda ramasi si na na na. Lord, forgive us. Forgive us, Lord, for our old way of thinking. Forgive those that have offended us. Forgive our offender, Lord. Forgive me, Lord, for repeating the offense. Forgive me, Lord, for doing what was done to me. Forgive me, Ramansa. Forgive me, Jesus. Lord, I lay it down at the altar. You can handle it better than I can. Come on, talk to the Lord. You're mighty quiet. He can handle it better than you can. Forgive me, Lord, for mismanaging my funds. Forgive me, Lord, for not being a good steward over the gift that you've placed in me. Forgive me, Lord, for comparing myself unjustly to someone else. Forgive me, Lord. 
daddy wasn't there. I released him. Mama left me. I release her. Come on. I forgive that teacher. I forgive that adult in the church that said I would never be. I forgive them. I let that pain and embarrassment go when they sat me down. I let it go. Father, forgive them. Bless them. Now bless those. I want you to bless in your prayer. Bless them that hurt you. Ask God to have mercy upon them. Come on. Mercy. Pray for mercy. Pray for mercy. 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 Pray for mercy. Pray for mercy. Come on. Talk to them, saints. Father, forgive me for gossiping when I'm supposed to be praying for them. Father, forgive me for talking too much. Sheesh. Jesus. Come on, saints. Come on. We almost finished. Come on. Jesus. Jesus. I had nobody to help me, but God, you were there. Come on, come on. I didn't have a role model, a male role model in the home. I did what I saw. I did what I knew. Come on, Jesus. I want you to release people out of your spirit. Release them, release them, release them, hallelujah and release yourself. Joseph was able to forgive his brothers and repay animosity with benevolence. Today is the day you declare out of your mouth, enough is enough. Come on. I want you to keep your hands on yourself. Keep your hands on yourself. Ah, Jesus. I want you to declare enough is enough. No more repeats. The cycle is broken. The yoke is destroyed. No more repeats. The cycle is broken. And the yoke is destroyed. Now, I want you to imagine that you had a mirror. Stay right there, man of God. Yes, sir. Stay right there. Or even if you had your phone, if you have your phone, you want to take it out and look at the camera where you can only see yourself. I want you to be able to see you and nobody else. If you got a mirror in your bag, look at the mirror. I want you to look at you. Now, as you're looking at yourself, I want you to hear the question. How do you see yourself? What do you see when you see you? What are you subscribing to? Whose report are you believing concerning who you are? Not what happened to you, but who you are. What does the word say about you? Keep looking at yourself. Do you know that you are Christ's beloved one? As you look at yourself, I want you to repeat after me. Everything we're doing, it is voice activated. I can do all things through Christ. 
who strengthens me. His grace is sufficient and his strength is made perfect in my weakness. When doubt fills my mind, keep looking at yourself. God comforts give me renewed hope and cheer. Keep looking. I am wonderfully and fearfully made. I am wonderfully and fearfully made. I am more than a conqueror. I am loved by God. I am heard by God. I trust in God's timing for my life. God has great plans for my life. Say it again, God has great plans for my life. Look at yourself and say, God has great plans for my life. Come on and raise your voice in this house. Come on and raise your voice. God has great plans for you. He has great plans for you. Bless the name of the Lord, for he knows the way that you should take. He knew you. He knew, hallelujah. Hallelujah. You should be encouraged at, to this morning. You really should be encouraged because I'm encouraged for you. Thank you, Jesus. Romans 8, hallelujah. Jesus, how I lived, how with your grace. Yes, I turned a little bit of a Holy Spirit, yet I don't want to say, I am Lord. Drench my heart. Drench my heart. As my lips. As my lips. Part your praise. Hey, precious Jesus. Precious Jesus. Come on and love on the Lord. Everyone say, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Stay there. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Come now, come now, Holy. Romans 8 and 28 clearly tells us that all things work together for the good of them that love God and to them that are called according to his purpose. The very fact that he knew Jeremiah from the very foundations of this world lets you know that nothing takes our God by surprise. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, you know me, O oh great God. You made me just like I am. You made me just like I am. Forgive me, oh God. I have not fully embraced. Come on, the wondrous works of your hands. This day, Lord, 
I commit. Stand on your feet. This day, Lord, I recommit myself to you and the rest. I recommit myself and rest in knowing you know what's best for me. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. God calls your people to rise above past failures. Lift your hands in this house. Calls your people to rise above past failures, Lord. Calls them to rise above past circumstances. Sins of the bloodline that opened the door for curses. Now in the mighty name of Jesus, uh, by the finished work of the cross, we disconnect and disengage every family member. We disengage every member now and all those connected to them from systems and cycles of failures uh, in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, use your people, Lord, uh, for your service. Uh, let their life be a light in this dark world in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, now lift your voice in this place. Lift him, lift him, lift him, lift him. Come on and bless the Lord. Hey, bless him, bless him. Hey, hallelujah. Bless the Lord, hallelujah. Bless the Lord, hallelujah. Bless the Lord, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, all praises be to the King of kings and the Lord. He is, he is wonderful. All praises, all Lord, to the King of Kings, give it to him. He is. Hey, bless the Lord, amen, amen. Thank you, Jesus. If you have commit, made that mental commitment, recommitment and you want someone to touch and agree with you make your way here thank you Jesus our altar workers are ready and prepared to pray with you thank you Jesus to touch and agree with you thank you Lord amen we bless God yes Lord if you do not know the Lord and you want to know more about the Lord amen make yourself on down here in Jesus name we have someone to talk with you to minister to you about the goodness of the Lord thank you Jesus amen this is a good sign this is a good sign come on and bless the name of the Lord yes no 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 that's for President Obama Clinton and everybody else I'm talking about the King of Kings come on baby and the Lord of Lords Come on, baby. Thank you, Jesus. Let us rejoice. Let us rejoice with heaven. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. Come on, all praises. Thank you. 
Lift your hands and praise him for the word of God. Thank you for thank him for the word bearer today. Come on. The Lord doeth all things well. And the fact that God would send us such a great reminder. It's for your good. While it may not seem good while it's working, it will work for your good. Are you glad about that today? Hug two people and tell them it was for your good. Can we give God praise for Minister Denise James today? What a timely and weighty word. I, I love you. you. May be seated. I'm so grateful that God is maturing us place where we receive the word because it's the word <laughs> because it's the word uh, so as I was sitting there uh, it, 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 it hit me so powerfully and I got lost in a thought and the thought was and I could not shake it in my mind is that how we are so tied to certain styles and certain ways until it makes me wonder then do you really love the word do you get the word or are you just moved by the style now here it is the way you live indicates that it, you're more style conscious because when you really get a word like this it'll make you start thinking about how you live I can't hear nobody talking to me. It'll start, you will start internalizing because you heard. And faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word. Hearing by the word of God. Come one more time. Let's thank God for this amazing gift God used today. What a blessing. What a blessing. She's a little pistol. A little pistol. She's small, but don't let the smallness fool you. She, she packing, y'all. She packing. What a great anointing, and I'm grateful. I want you to prepare yourself to, to do uh, something that the Lord gave us. And I over the weekend, and um, I, I was thinking, and I, as I always do, uh, and I want to say this, I, I never, I never just get up here uh, and things are not on automatic pilot for me. Uh, I, I want to think things through, meditate, so we're not just doing things to do things. And I want to say that April uh, is, and I heard so powerfully of the culture, Pastor Coulter talk about Frangelism Month, and I know you are excited. I know you are excited much, but... I know you are excited about God growing the church. I'm going to try it again. 
I know you are excited about God growing the church and advancing the kingdom of God. I'm excited too. Uh, but let me throw this in there while I'm thinking about it. That April is also, I think Tamika, Sister Tamika, you told me this, that April is financial literacy. Is that it? Financial literacy month. And to be to take emphasis on financial literacy. And how many of you know you could live and serve the Lord better uh, with, with your financial situation better? Hmm? And that you would have an understanding. And most of the time, when, when, when we get in this moment, people give a dissertation about money because they're trying to re receive money in the church. And so people have a barrier. But all, all of April... Uh, we will be uh, we will be offering classes and opportunities for you one on one even and in a classroom setting and even preaching and the teaching of the word of the Lord will be geared toward geared toward financial literacy. Amen. We're going to sing and shout and, and praise God, but we're going to learn because if my money gets right, my shout will be better. Nobody? Anybody feel like me? If I could manage my money better, I'd feel better. Amen. You can't, you can't live in that utopic sp uh, space all day and all night. You got to come out into the real world. And um, it ain't the devil. It ain't the devil. Come on. Sometimes when I'm frustrated financially, I ain't, it ain't the devil. I go in that room and I see them sneakers. I see them shoes that hurt. That I don't wear often because they hurt. And when I run my hand in my pocket, it ain't got that. I go, that's the devil. No, it ain't the devil. Stop giving your credit card number. That gray truck is pulling up to your house way too many times. Keep looking straight. Sheen got all you. <laughs> Are you hearing what I'm saying? So from the pulpit to the door, I would first admit, I want God to help me and, and, I, and he's given us people qualified to help us manage the blessing. Amen. So we're going to look forward to doing that all April. Don't, don't miss an opportunity to grow financially, and grow uh, educationally as it relates to that so that God can be glorified because we can shout and dance. And I, I've seen us do it, run and jump and shout about this mortgage being paid off. But if you ain't giving no money because you don't have it, the mortgage is not going to be paid off. Y'all are quiet. Amen. Um, receiving offerings, you know, when people are, you know, I've, I've been in church a long time. I don't know if y'all know this, but I've been preaching almost 42 years, uh, actively preaching, which means I've been in this position for, for the last almost 42 years of my life. Almost every week of my life, I've stood in front of audiences. That's a lot and a long time. And what I know is that when people are not doing well financially, uh, the preacher gets indicted for receiving more offerings. That's all they want is your money. Lord, he was doing good. Oh, Lord, here he come. But people who got money don't feel like that. I can't hit I said people that got money don't feel like that. So if that is the case, Lord, help me to increase my understanding of, and, and maturity so I can manage so that I can have what is needed to be a blessing to the kingdom of God and to be a blessing in my community. God has given us everything 
needful and necessary to turn our community right side up. But we've got to manage properly. We give $30 every week above our tithe and offerings and it goes directly to the support and the maintenance of making sure that we have what we need to meet all of our financial obligations, i.e. mortgage, lights, and, and I wouldn't do this uh, just to be doing this, but God has blessed us. Uh, you may not travel and you may not hear and uh, you're not always privy to things that people say, but I am, I was, last week I was in San Antonio, Texas at a World Vision pastors gathering and preachers from all over the world were there, all over the country in particular, and so many preachers and, and pastors that I have never met walked up to me and said, I know who you are. You all have an amazing ministry, and your media is, we, I, I went back to my media ministry and said, listen, go follow that pastor in that church, and I want y'all to start doing stuff like that. So it, on our Instagram, you see people doing things that, where is he? Brother BJ. <laughs> yeah. And um, I have given his number, not because they're going to take him, because that's already been established. He can't go nowhere. <laughs> but, 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 but I have given and referred him because, because God has gifted him and he's given his great gift to our church and serving us so he ought to receive the blessings of exposure. But let me say this. The remark has been, you all's sanctuary and your grounds are amazing. God is, I mean, and I'm going, ah, we got some work to do. He said, work to do? Man, give me that. What I'm trying to tell you is sometimes when you're in it, you don't see the magnitude of what God has done. And you stop celebrating and you stop honoring and you start stop appreciating um, we ain't better than nobody else but I want to tell you something God in and let me put it in context in the poorest city in the state with the highest crime percentage with the lowest pay scale God has blessed us yep some of y'all gonna get it. I, I, I don't know. I don't know what this is about. I really don't know what this is about. Now I'm gonna say something. It may sound like it's fussing, but you take it the way you wanna take it. Some of y'all ain't excited until you get up here. And then we gotta endure all your anointing and all your overwhelmness. Miss me with all of that. Either you get excited about what everything is going on, or you sit your happy hips down. And I'm going to tell you as a pastor, some of you will never come to the forefront because you ain't got, you are critical and judgmental and got no fire for nobody else until it's you. Which tells me, listen to me, it tells me you don't have much. Because anybody who is critical can't do it. Because people who do this understand what it takes and understand and have a healthy respect for the process. That's why when I see singers not responding to other singers, it tells me you ain't got much in you. Y'all ain't saying, when I see preachers came back other preachers, they can't receive, it means that, it means that you don't, wouldn't be good up here either. Because it's easy to sit there and be critical about something you can't do. The best critics are the people who can't do it. Howard Cosell was a great commentary, but commentator, but he couldn't box. There's a whole lot of folk who play, who, who call plays, or rather, or call the games. If you put them in the game, they couldn't do it. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Hallelujah. Little short folk. 
Talking about he should have he should have cut right. You ain't got all them people following you. With all them helmets on. You talking about he should have did this. It's easy to say that from that perspective. Is that right? It's easy. It's easy. And I'm saying this because excitement is the breeding ground of miracles. And if you want God to do with us what he, what he said he's going to do, he's looking for an excited people. He's looking for a people that support one another. I said he looked for a people that support one another. Listen, listen, because uh, I feel that spirit in here. And, 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 and this is just a pastoral moment, so let me just take my pastoral liberty. Uh, you have my permission next Sunday. Don't sit next to somebody that won't open their mouth, won't say nothing, don't do nothing. And, and then when they do, they got something critical to say. Don't be nasty. Just move your seat. You don't need to be sitting around nobody that's going to put out your fire. Sitting in faith. And let me say this. When it's time to open our mouths, it's time for everybody to open your mouth. When it's time to lift your hands, it's time for everybody to lift your hand. I don't feel like that. Not here. The model is that when we worship, we all worship together. Is that right? The model is, if we do it, we do it together. Every time Israel got a victory, the reason why they got the victory was because they were unified and they were obedient. That's the only reason why God, the walls didn't come down because they had such big mouths. Their mouth didn't make the wall come down. What made Jericho crumble was that all 600 of them did the same thing at the same time. reason why the Holy Ghost fell on the day of Pentecost is, is clear. They were all in one place on one accord. Tell your neighbor, don't block my flow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I am believing God that we would get to the place where we would internalize and actualize the word of God in such a way until it creates such a Holy Ghost hysteria and a stir in this city. I still believe the city belongs to us. I still believe that God has given us regional responsibility. And in the midst, Jesus loves South Carolina. Jesus loves America. And if, it, if, it, if Jesus loves the whole world, and he's given us regional responsibility. I want you that will do this with us today out of commitment and love. Stand to your feet, everybody, with that $30 gift. We're not going to struggle to do it. We're going to do it because it's right to do. Everybody stand with that. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We give $30 above our tithe and offerings as the Lord has prospered us, and we are able to do it. And if we don't have $30, we get the closest thing to it. The closest thing. You ought to do something. You ought to do something. You ought to do something. In the name of the Lord, everybody ought to be doing something to say that I love my church. I love kingdom life and I want to make sure that I do what I can. There ought to be not a leader that doesn't do this. Amen. You can't lead people where you don't go. Amen. Father, thank you for the privilege. Thank you for this moment. Thank you for what our hearts have felt and our ears have heard. And Father, take our attempt to be good stewards and to be um, cheerful givers. And just like you took the two fish and the five loaves of bread, you took it, you blessed it, you broke it, and you gave it. Multiply these seeds so that every need is met by the time it needs to be. And we thank you in Jesus' name. 
It is so. So it is. Amen. Come from wherever you are, everybody. Do all you can. Hold up his name. Don't let his name go down. Don't let his name go down. Oh, don't let his name go down. Do all you can. Hold up his name. Don't let his name go down. Don't let his name go down. Don't let his name go down. Do all you can. Hold up his name. Don't let his name go down. One more time, we're going home. Don't let his name go down. Everybody standing. Don't let his name do all you can. Hold up his name. Don't let his name. Lady Andrina, do you have anything you want to add? All right. The Lord bless you. The bus is leaving at 4:15. Season sisters have their hot dog sale and nacho sale. Let's avail ourselves to that. I pray that you would be in attendance this afternoon to support the effort to, to encourage the church and to celebrate what God has done in their lives. And what you make happen for somebody else, God will make happen for you. Amen. Um, let's remember, uh, let me say this softly. Let, let me say this, that our Holy Week observance... Uh, is coming up uh, and so that Tuesday the 26th of course we're gonna have an amazing women's day you already know about that amen Our women's choir is going to be singing in full lady Rachel Brown is coming to preach the Word of God and if you've never heard her trust me when I tell you she is the wife of pastor Johnny Brown and and I was teasing him I said she's on your heels Thank God. She's going to be preaching the word of God next week. And um, it's, it's exciting. She's a young lady, and I love it. Amen. She's a, she's a dreamer. <laughs> I thought the dreamers would say something. <laughs> Amen. But she's packing and asking. I've been led of the Lord to do this. Um, that Tuesday night, we're going to have a Gethsemane experience. At 7 p.m., we're going to have a Gethsemane experience. It will not be online, I don't think yet. I don't know, I'll, I'll decide as God leads me. But we're going to be in the house of God on the Tuesday the 26th for a Gethsemane prayer experience. Amen. Be here. And um, on that Thursday is Monday Thursday. And as we have started a few years ago, just according to the calendar and a and to being more consistent with the events that led up to the crucifixion, we will be here Monday, Thursday, and we will be singing. We will be singing and uh, exhorting some of our ministers. We'll be sharing and reading uh, the seven last cries, and for a couple of moments, they will expound on it, but we will be singing as a congregation. I want you to come. Listen, if you got your hymn book, you need, you need to bring your old What's that? I forgot what it's called. I thought y'all would know it. That burgundy, it's red or something. Amen. It's, it's amen or a yes, Lord hymn book. Whatever it is, we're going to be singing the hymns of the church uh, as a congregation. It won't be a concert. The choir is not going to be singing the concert. The team is not going to be singing. The, we as a people are going to sing the hymns of the church that speak to the moment and to the occasion. And God's going to bless us, and I have a word for your life on Resurrection Sunday. I believe God's going to do something in this place. I've already been praying about it, and I know that God is going to help us. So will you be a part? Now unto him that is able to keep us from falling, present us faultless before his presence with exceeding joy to the only wise God. Be glory, dominion, both now and forever. And every glad heart, say amen. Shake your hands with the stranger and make friends.
Thank <laughs> you.